hello, hello, hello. This is Graham again with Tutorial Clarity. Um, in this lesson, I'm basically going to show all of you how to do a 3D camera movement in your animations. Um, at first, it can seem pretty intimidating, but after three or four projects that involve 3D camera movement, it becomes second nature, I promise. So, uh, anyway, here's the effect that we'll be creating involving 3D camera movements and 3D text layers. I fly like purple, get high like planes. If you catch me at the border, I got visas in my name. If you come around here, I'll make a more day. I get one down in a second if you wait. As usual, I'm going to be using the Trap Code Particular plugin, but I should note that it isn't completely necessary. Uh, the trap code plugins are really well programmed for 3D camera movements and working in 3D spaces, so I would suggest using them in your future projects that involve 3D cameras. All that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Um, as always, let's make sure you're in a new project, go to Composition, New Composition, and make sure you have my settings here. I'm just going to change the duration to about 10 seconds. It's going to be a relatively short animation anyway. Go ahead and pause if you need to, and there we go. I know that I'm going to be using a text layer for the 3D text, as well as a camera to rotate around the text. And, uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and just create a few layers, the ones that I know, you know, intuitively that I'm going to be using. First one is our camera. And go to Layer, New, Camera, and we'll just call this camera. I have the preset to about 35 millimeters, and go ahead and click OK. Click OK again and there we go now what I'm gonna be doing there's a technique for camera layers and I'm gonna be parenting the camera to a null object and I'm just gonna be using the null object for the rotation and that'll make sense a little bit later when we actually do that to rotate around the text but uh, go to layer new and null object and I'm gonna select it hit enter on my keyboard and just call it null that's it just to keep things simple the next one that we're gonna be doing is our text layer I'm going to go to Layer, New, Text. And on the text, I'm just going to type something like, uh, this can be. And this can be anything you want is eventually what I'm going to be typing, but uh, we're just going to start off with this, and I'll show you where I'm going with it. Turn off my Tile Action Safe, and that's pretty much it thus far. The other layer we need to create is our background layer. So I'm going to go to Layer, New, and I'm going to create a solid. And I'm going to call this Background. Again, keeping things simple. And I'm going to drag the background to the very bottom. And I'm going to drag the camera to the top. And I'm going to drag the null above that. And that's pretty much a good order. So we need to create these layers now that we have, or I'm sorry, now that we have them created, we need to make them 3D layers. And you can do that by hitting F4 on your keyboard, and you'll see that toggles between modes and settings. And we're going to apply and make the null object a 3D layer so we can get the 3D rotation options that come with it. And we're going to select our This Can Be, and we're going to make that 3D as well. And as I said in the beginning, we're going to be parenting the null, or the camera, to the null object. And it's really simple. All you have to do is pick whip over here to the null object. Ta-da! And now, wherever you rotate the null object, the camera will rotate as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So just to keep things pretty simple, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take care of the background effect first. And I just applied a ramp, a gradient. So I'm going to go to Effect, Generate, come down to the bottom, and click Ramp. All right, now I'm going to set the ramp shape to radial. And I'm going to just zoom out for a second, and I'm going to drag this circle into the center because I want the ramp to start from the center and go outwards like such. I'm going to set the start color to gray, not really a hard gray, just a little light gray. Maybe a little bit darker. That seems about good. And the end color is already white. I'm sorry, white. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to go to end of ramp, and I'm just going to expand it. Create a little smoother gradient. There we go. That's, that's nice enough. That is nice enough. I'm just going to pull this down a little bit. And there we go. All right, now on to the effect. First thing we're going to do, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be duplicating this text layer, and we're just going to apply some effects to it. So the first thing we're going to do is apply a glow effect. Go to effect, stylize 
and glow. And we're just going to keep the presets. I'm going to pull it up. And that is it. I just like adding a glow to it because it's behind the gray and uh, makes it look a little nicer, in my opinion. You're welcome to do whatever you want. So then, now we have to animate the opacity. I've done this in one previous tutorial, I believe. I believe it was my pulsating wave effect. But uh, yeah, so just pull it down and you'll see this tab or button over here. It says animate. Left click it and click on opacity because we're going to be animating the opacity. And that pulls down the animator one options, automatically pulls down the range selector and the opacity itself. So I'm going to set the opacity of this to zero. Now don't get this confused with the transform opacity, which is down here. Leave that at 100%. This is just the animator opacity. So now I'm going to select the range selector, pull that down, and uh, left click the stopwatch, starting at frame zero, and I'm going to go up to about 15, maybe a little shorter, a little bit quicker, slightly, 13 frames. And I'm going to left click this diamond here to insert another keyframe. I'm going to double click the end of that frame, pops up the value, and I'm going to set the value to 100%. So now it animates on pretty smoothly, like such. Now, I'm just going to pull this back up, and that pretty much takes care of the animation for our text layer. As for the particle layer, um, you may have noticed that in the effect. Um, this is completely optional. Feel free to skip this if you like, but I'm just trying to show the point that you can include particles into your 3D animations, and particular is very effective at doing that. You actually don't even have to convert the layer to 3D. It's already done in 3D space. So I'm just going to do that for those of you who want to know. I'm going to go to layer, new, solid, and I'm going to call this particles. And to save everybody time, I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to go to effect, trap code, particular. And like I said, to save everybody time, I'm going to just use an animation preset, specifically the T underscore wipe color glow and that is down here at the bottom I believe Let's see T white glow colorful yeah that's the one and that actually starts off at the beginning and it animates across the screen pretty cool pretty cool alright so I'm just gonna leave it like that and like I said that's optional you don't even have to have that I just think it adds something nice to it alright now what we need to do is we need to actually duplicate our text layers um, yeah, it really is that simple. The hotkey to duplicate a layer, by the way, is control plus D on your keyboard.